In this video, we're going to be talking about experimental coding in designed experiments. So converting some variable like temperature, for example, into a normalized value. So minus one, plus one, zero are the ones typically used in designed experiments. And to, to explore why we might want to do this and how we actually do it, we're going to start with an experiment. So let's say that I'm growing some apple trees and I'm interested in getting the most apples out of my trees that I can. And so I'm going to set up an experiment with a couple of factors. So let's say that, you know, maybe I put my trees in a greenhouse so I can change the temperature. And maybe I can change how much I water the trees. And for the response, let's say that I'm just looking for the number of apples generated by the tree, the number of apples. And so to set up this experiment, I want different values of temperature. So maybe I try 20 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, and 30 degrees Celsius, for example. And for water, let's say I try 50 liters a day, uh, 100 liters a day, and 150 liters a day. And so let's say that I actually carry out this experiment and I want to fit a model to the data. So I want to try and make sense of the data. I might try fitting a linear model, which is a, a very reasonable and standard model, which says our response, which is the number of apples, is equal to some offset or some intercept, which I'll call y naught, plus some coefficient, I'll call it beta one, multiplied by my temperature, plus some other coefficient, beta two, multiplied by my water. And maybe I wanna figure out how these two variables interact with each other. So I've got also a beta one, two term, times my temperature, times my water. And you know, this is all fine and good. I can plug this into my favorite statistical package or calculate it myself. And maybe I figure out that my Y naught value is equal to say 340. My beta one value is equal to minus 12. My beta two value is equal to minus 3.9 and my beta 1, 2 value is equal to 0.16. And this is fine and good. You know, there's nothing wrong with this per se. But my question is, how, how are we supposed to interpret this equation? So just from looking at it, can you tell what the effect of temperature is? So if I just increase the temperature, is it obvious to you what how the number of apples should change. You might think that, oh, well, you know, beta one is negative. So if I increase the temperature, that must mean that my yield, or the number of apples will go down. But it turns out that that's actually not the case because of this awkward little term right here. I might also ask you which of these variables has the strongest effect. And you might say, oh, temperature, because my beta one is the largest. But this is awkward because temperature has units of degrees Celsius and we're only changing it in increments of five, whereas water has units of liters per day and we're changing that in increments of 50. So it's actually not the case that temperature is the most important effect. It's also not the case that the independent effect of temperature is that it decreases our yield. These are actually both wrong. They're both wrong. And so how do we fix this? Well, we fix this with experimental coding. So what I would like is for all of my variables to change by the same amount. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'll call it little t, which is equal to my actual temperature minus my average temperature divided by the temperature step. So the in this case, that would be five degrees Celsius. I'm also going to define my water variable as the actual amount of water minus the average 
the average amount of water divided by my step in the water variable. So this would be 50 liters a day. That way, my temperature takes the values of zero, or sorry, minus one, zero, and one. And water also takes the values of minus one, zero, and one. And so this way I can much more easily compare the effects of my variable. So which one is the most important? And I don't have to worry about, you know, B2 having awkward units of days over liters, B1 having units of per temperature. I don't have to worry about any of that. And so if I redo my model, I'll get that my response, so the number of apples, which I've just called Y here, is equal to 50 plus, and now my actual coefficient, or my coded coefficient, is 20 times my little temperature variable, plus 5 times my little water variable, plus 40 times little temperature times little water. Now you might notice that this offset is also different than in my first equation, and this turns out to be the mean of all of my responses, whereas this value is the th theoretical value when the temperature is equal to zero and the water is equal to zero. And that doesn't really have any meaning. That's not interesting for us, um, so we don't care about it. But this this is meaningful. This is the average response of all of our experiments. This is also very easy to look at. So it tells us that the effect of varying temperature, which is 20, is four times larger than the effect of varying the water. So it turns out that our temperature effect is in fact more important, but it's in this case positive. So independently changing our temperature actually increases our yield and similarly, the temperature times water coefficient, which before was just 0.16, which like how do we even interpret what that means? It's got such horrible units. Now we see that the effect of varying our temperature and water together is actually two times larger than our, temper our independent effective temperature. And in fact, it's almost as large as the mean of our experiments. So whereas before, it's this horribly awkward tiny value that we don't know how to interpret. Now we can make concrete statements about exactly what all of our effects are. So this is the main effect of temperature. This is the main effect of water. And this is our two-factor interaction term. And so now that we've converted it into a coded equation, instead of just fitting the variables as they were, we can actually interpret each of the coefficients here. As always, a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You are all awesome. If you aren't yet a supporter, get early access, exclusive content, a peek behind the scenes, and become part of the community by clicking on the link below.